LC is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. I'm calling to talk to my children. If you are satisfied with your message, press 1 to listen. You have pressed an incorrect key. If you are satisfied with your message, send your message to you. Your message. Yes, um, my name is Matthew Walker, and today is my day to be with my children. Valerie took the children out of town, um, and when I tried to call, there's no answer. And so, you know, uh, Every time I call to complain that she blocks me from having the children on time, blocks me from having the children on whatever day, it, it hasn't, the police reports, never get, they never go all the way to the point where she can get in trouble or she gets in trouble. I just have to continue to just be frustrated by it. Today, the children are, they are in another state. I have tried to call. There's no answer. Surely, surely today, surely today, surely today, when I call back in 12 hours, surely, surely, today's the day that she can get in trouble. I'm, I'm like, it would be so nice if the system could work so that she can get in trouble for not letting me be with my children on whatever day. Today is my day from 4 to 6. I'm supposed to have my children or at least talk to them, video chat, anything. I haven't heard from them, and when I call, no response. So that should be definitely a violation, definitely a violation of that particular law. So I'm, I'm calling. What should I do? Should I talk to a police officer now, or should I wait for 12 hours? You tell me what you want to do. Well, I mean, I, do do you know what police officers are there? I mean, I don't know if um if my no, that name doesn't work that way. Um, okay, so I guess then I guess if you could put me through to a police officer, then. How do you spell your last name? It's Walker, W-A-L-K-E-R. What's your middle initial? R. What's your phone number? It's uh, 608-343-9178. Still live at 502 Glendale? Correct, yes, sir. Hold on. I'll have an officer call you back in just a few minutes, Mr. Walker. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. You can hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, I was taking out the Bluetooth and everything like that. You said this officer, um, uh, uh, say your name again. Of I, I, it's Officer Olson. Oh, Olson. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, thank you for calling me back. Um, probably the thing about it is, is that over the past, um, five months or so, whenever I call to report that my wife or soon to be ex-wife Valerie 
that she is blocking the children from being with me or is has not sent the children out, you know, during my time. Mm-hmm. Um, none of the police reports, none, none of the times that I've called have only, only, only three of them out of the many times that I've called have been able to be turned into a police report. Usually the police officer that I talk to 12 hours later, you know, not at, you know, not at immediately when it happens, but I have to call back 12 hours later. Usually I spend about an hour with them on the phone and they're basically letting me know that they're not going to write it up to become a police report. And so then it's like, it's like I have to deal with the fact that week after week, visit after visit, she's able to, you know, she can frustrate me by changing the time, by not letting me see them or whatever. And, you know, I have no recourse other than calling the police when it's not court day. And so I'm calling today from 4 to 6 is supposed to be my time. Mm -hmm. She took the children out of town, which is okay, but I talked to the children on on Saturday, and what we said is that they would call me at 4 o'clock. They didn't call me at 4 o'clock because Valerie has blocked all of the ways that I would interact with them. She's blocked all that. It's not, it's not a, you know how like, you know, you know how like you are rational and then other people are rational. And so, but if you're being, if you're being a douche, if you're being, if you're intentionally being a dick towards me, which she is, she's made it so that it's not easy for me. She's made it so that it's frustrating so that I would be upset about it. So that I constantly have in my chest the upsetness of not being able to have my children. Right? So she does it. So then I'm upset about it. And as you can hear in my voice, I'm upset about it. Now, but instead of the police doing something to make it difficult for her, so that I I, want to be in a happy mood all the time. Right. Okay? I want to be in a happy mood. But see, but, but nobody does anything. The judge hasn't done anything. The police so far have done nothing to make it so that she fears, she fears, oh, I'm going to go to jail. Oh, I'm going to get a ticket. She doesn't fear any, there's, because, because the, usually the police will spend the time, they will, instead of writing it up and say, hey, you know what, Matt just wants to have his children. Today, now, it's almost 6 o'clock. From 4 to 6, I've, I've waited for my children to call. I called the phone number that my son has, and mm-hmm. there was no answer. That right there is enough. That right there. That. The fact that I called and there was no answer and the fact that they haven't called me from four to six, that is enough for the police report to be written because she violated the statute that, you know, you're not supposed to block me from having my children at all. That's enough. Now, she's done this multiple times, and somehow, somehow the police officers always figure out a way to argue with me where I'm just supposed to accept it. Hey, Matthew. Matthew. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's Officer Westfall. I've talked to you hey, before. Hey, yes, ma'am. I, I am, yep, I'm training uh, Officer Olson. So he's a, kind of aware. I'm aware we're standing here. So right. she, didn't, she didn't send the kids out today? To, she, the children are, they, she has the children out of town in Chicago, oh. probably. And okay. so And so the agreement that me and my son made on Saturday is, like it says in the in the order, it says we don't have to visit in person. We can do it by phone from okay. 4 to 6 on Tuesday, 4 to 6 okay. on Thursday. So right now it's almost 6 o'clock. I, I, I'm not looking at the clock right now because I'm on the phone. But the yeah, point is – Yeah, yep. Mm-hmm. The, the point is, is that today my son said, Dad, we'll call you. Because okay. I, cause I told him, because I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not about to – I've done enough, and I'm exhausted by this whole process. Yep. I'm just trying to be a father to my children. 
And so let me, Matthew, you don't want to ruin his fun today. So you were like, okay, I'll let you go. It's not a big deal. But just I want to be able to talk with you for the two hours. Well, no, we didn't even talk today at all. We haven't talked since, since Saturday. That's what I'm so, saying. But that was the agreement on Saturday that you made with your son that you would let him go, but you needed to be able to talk to him today during your two hours. Right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And they knew. They know that, that they know that my little time is important to me because I don't got no influence over my children's life. I, I, you know, at, at least during my little time, I can talk, you know, whatever. So, yes, he said he was going to send me a link so that we can video chat okay. during, on a text. I called him. There was no answer. I waited, okay. uh, you know, enough time for them to call me because they know what time it is. So, yep. and what the thing about it is, is that what it says online, one of the things they say is that a lot of parents, when they're trying to screw over the other parents in, in terms of parental alienation, they will give the children a better option than to, and, and that's what she did. What I'm, I'm not with her. If you called her, whatever they can say. Oh, we're doing this. Oh, we're doing that. Oh, they can make up whatever. Right. But the bottom line is, is that from four to six, me and my children should have been on the phone. Or I don't mind it being a different time. Right. But by now, they should have called me, you know, yep. or whatever. Anyway, Absolutely. so you, but you understand, but you know, now my point is, my question is, is that when I call back at five in the morning or four in the morning, is the police officer that's on there, are they going to, you know, fight against making it a police report? I, I need, I, I no, need for these. Matthew, yeah, Matthew, yes, ma'am. Call, call and ask for Officer Westfall. Transfer okay. to my voicemail. Let okay. me know if or not she made arrangements. And if right. she hasn't, I will add to the case file that I put that I told you I was going to add to. Right, right, did. yes, ma'am. Yep, and I will add to that so that thank there you is so much. documentation. Okay. Sound. Look, I appreciate. It. Thank you so much. Look, thank you for letting me at least get it off my chest because, uh, you know, this, this, it's the stereotype of black men not caring for their children. I've grown up. And I've been through the military, and I've seen that that stereotype is not 100% accurate in, you know, in terms of it relating to black men. And I don't need my children to grow up at all feeling like I abandoned them or that I didn't want to be around them. And their mother has all the power to, to, to make them feel. My, my children right now, they feel that I left. And if you go back and look at the records, if you go back and look at, you know, history of police records or whatever, you will see that you will see that she's the one that filed a temporary restraining order when and she lied in the temporary restraining order. She uh -huh. lied in that and, and, and I and so but my children, they they just believe that I left. Okay. And so that, so now so and if you can imagine and you probably can imagine, because I think you said that you you had to kind of deal with situations like this before. If yep. she's in the position to lie, and at least if I got a police report and I can show that to the judge and it's in the record, when I give my my son the binder when he gets older, he can see, oh, mom did do that, rather than it be uh, being on me because I'm 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 tired of always being the bad guy when I'm I never, you know, I'm sitting. I had a warrant for my arrest for 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 for, for library books, you know. I got beat up by the by the Toma VA police or whatever, and and there were. I, it's like I I don't I'm not that bad of a person that warrants all of this drama. It's like, please could could y'all be on my side and help me conquer so that my children can have their dad. I, yeah, my Matt, children Matt, need me. Yes, ma'am. I'm gonna say one thing. Make it clear. I'm not on your side. I'm not on Valerie's side. I'm on your children's side. And I truly believe that they need to have some kind of contact with their dad because that's obviously what the court is saying, okay? So I'm siding with your children. And, yes, they need to understand that their dad is still around, okay? So yes, I'm not doing this for you. I'm not doing this for Valerie. I'm doing this because the court has said that Matthew needs to be able to see his children. And I believe exactly what you said, that you're trying to show them that you are being their father and you should have that opportunity to do that. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. Okay? So right. I'll, I'll so I'll, I'll file the stuff I guess so, so I call tomorrow at four four o'clock in the morning right? Yep. Just ask for my voicemail. They'll transfer you to my voicemail. 
And okay. then I will put that report. I'll have them say, uh, give them this um, this CAD that we're talking right now about what happened, and I will put that that information with that report. Same case number that you had before. Okay. Thank you so much. I I really appreciate it, man. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, not a problem, Matthew. Keep, just keep trying to see if she'll let you have some kind of time with them. Just keep trying, okay? Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. And then, yes, yeah, let, let me know about that, okay? Sounds good. Will do. And uh, good to meet you, Officer Olson. Hopefully you have a good day. Nice to meet you, too, Matthew. You, too. Yeah, bless you now. Bye-bye. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, Dad. Uh, hold on one sec. So, uh, Dad, what's up? I was waiting on you, and I tried to call. But um, sorry, man. Wait, you tr I don't think you tried to call, man. I had my phone with me all day. Well, I mean, when I when I called, I left a message. Sure, and... man. Let's check my call history. Maybe you did. It looks like you did. Recent too. Yeah. Dad, you didn't call me. Okay. All right, son. Oh, wait, you called me once. It looks like you called me once at 520. But, Dad, I, I, we're working on the house. Well, well, I mean, we're not working on the house. Technically, we're working on... Wait, we're... Oh, wait, no, I forgot I had to do that. Hold on. Let me put you on hold for a sec. Okay, Dad, I'm here. So what really happened is I was outside playing with Jalen, and I completely lost track. Of Sorry, I completely lost track of time. So the thing is, we can just have our uh, little chat on Thursday. So I'll see you then. Bye, Dad. Bye, Dad. Hello. Yeah, hello. How you doing? Um, this is Matthew Walker, and uh, um, Officer Westfall told me to call her this morning and leave her a voicemail. So I'm just calling to be put into a voicemail, unless she's in already. She's not in already. Uh, I will send you over to her voicemail, okay? Hey, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. being forwarded to a Shortel voicemail system. Officer Westfall. Is not available. Please leave a message at the tone. When finished, you may hang up or press pound for additional options. Hey, how's it going, Officer Westfall? This is Matthew Walker. Uh, phone number is 608-343-9178. And uh, uh, at from 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock yesterday, the 17th, I was supposed to either have my children in my, you know, with me or video chat or phone call. None of those things happened. I called um, and, um, you know, uh, there was no answer. They were supposed to call me. There was no phone call. At around uh, uh, after our conversation, maybe about an hour and a half later or so, probably around like seven thirty, eight o'clock, I called my son. He answered, and he had a um, his prepared statement that I got the audio so it can be heard. 
and this, what he said, this checks all the boxes of the statute being broken. She said he said that that um, he was playing basketball with uh, his friend outside, his friend Jalen outside, meaning that his mother was aware of the time. Everybody's aware when four o'clock comes around that that's the time we we've been doing this. It's been it's been nineteen twenty months. So uh, it says. On one of the websites related to court, it says, do not present the children with other more supposedly fun options rather than spending time with their parents. That goes under parental alienation. She did that. Outside, any child is going to want to go outside, you know, and I totally understand that. Like, I understand that naturally speaking. You know what I'm saying? I can't beat a child going to play outside on a nice sunny day, you know, out, you know, outside when they, I, I, I can't, I can't compete with that. And I shouldn't have to. The law says from four to six, stop what you're doing and talk to your father for two hours. That's what the law says. That's what the, the, the court order says. Now, what he said was he was outside playing. He saw that I called. And 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 you know missed the call or whatever, and so then he said, "Daddy, we will talk to you Thursday," and hung up. I mean, there was a little bit more to say, but basically, he had a prepared statement that it is it is it's totally obvious that the mother, you know, that Valerie, you know, gave him words to say in order to, and then and then and then. But, you know, rushed me off the phone, and he hung up on me. He didn't even say goodbye. He just hung up. And this incident by itself, now, yeah, it can be rolled up with the rest of them, right, I, whatever. But it would be nice if this one right here was by itself because because the, the, the other police report that I got that has three incidents on there, those were very clear-cut incidents. And all the other ones are a little bit muddy because they, the kids might have come out. It was just late, or what? You know what I'm saying? You know, whatever. And I don't. And those, I want to keep those. But this one, on the 17th, it's clear cut. It's it's clear cut. And so I want to have it separate from all the rest of them because I don't. It, it shows a pattern, and I'm going to show the pattern, of course, in court. But it would be nice to have a police report that shows on the 17th of August that she did it. And I got the audio. I can, you know, if, if I got your email, I can let you hear what my son said so you can hear the whole conversation and you can hear how it went. And you can, with your own, you know, intuition, you can hear that my son was being short with me and that there were times in the conversation that his mother was giving him words to say. My point is, is that you know, um, I am what's best for my children. In other words, me as their father, I would not do that to the mother. I would never do that, but she's doing it. And 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 I've already experienced people saying, "Hey, we're siding with the children," but to side with the children means that you take what I'm saying seriously. I am. Sounding the alarm. I'm not breaking no laws. I'm not. I'm not. I'm only thing I'm doing is is making a report. Please, please, ma'am, can we make this? Put this on a separate police report, and because this has all just like if I if I if I broke a glass, if I if I went over to to somebody's house and I broke a window. It's clear cut. You don't need, you just oh, bro, window was broken. Matthew broke the window. Boom, and then you attach the statute that was broken, and then it's clear cut. And then they figure out: Am I going to be a ticket or is it go to jail? That's what I need with this situation. It's clear cut. It's clear cut. It's not a let me see the other side of the story. Let's figure it out. No, it's it's she knows when you out of town, 
you call me. Call me at 4 o'clock. Or call me, uh, call me during the day and say, Dad, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? None of that. None of that happened. None of it. So I can let you hear what my son said. Like I said, I can email that to you. Please, this, I, I, the only thing I got is doing this because nobody in the court system, the guardian at litem, the mediators, nobody is, is working to make sure that dad is having equal time with his children, equal ability to influence his children. Everybody is working towards making me not be able to have my children. And if I can get a police report, ma'am, please, if I can get a police report that, 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 that is written up, if I, like I said, if I, if I, if I, if I, um, if I uh, b- busted somebody's window, you guys would write it up in a way so that, it, so that you know, you know, anybody, they, they're like, you know what, yep, you broke the window, blah, blah, blah. And then, run, and, then, and, then, and then the prosecutors can run straight through it and do what they got to do. I've experienced that at the Toma Police hands. I've experienced it. You know what I'm saying? I, there, was a, there was a police report for two library books. If two library books, if two library books can get me a warrant for my arrest, then, then these multiple times that I don't have my children, especially, and, and, to, and yesterday, then it should be, it should, if I can get a warrant for my arrest for two library books, that was one for, was for my son and one was for me. If I can have a warrant for my arrest for two library books, then surely, surely a police report, a well-written police report that, that, that articulates the same frustration, whatever the, whatever the library, whatever frustration they had, that was in the police report that, that went all the way and escalated to, you know, a, 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 to a warrant for my arrest. And you can look up the records. I, I think you were the person that was on. So if a warrant for my arrest can happen for two library books, then surely something, something. Maximum recording limit has been exceeded. To send this message, press pound or hang up. To review, press message sent. Thank you for calling. If you know the extension of the person you want to reach, you may dial it now. Come on, please dispatch. Hey, how's it going, ma'am? Um... Today is Thursday, and uh, Valerie, again, did not uh, come, you know, did, let me talk to the children from 4 to 6. I called, all that other stuff. So um, I don't know if Officer Westfall, if she's around, because she, you know, is making a police report for me. But uh, if she's not, whatever. She I gotta, is you know. off duty. Okay. Is she in tomorrow? Um, I got to it, I mean, you know, if she's I'm not, not. I'm, yeah, I, I don't think so. But it'd be best just to call tomorrow and find out because you never know what their schedules, and I can't see their schedules, so you okay. just never know if they are filling in for somebody or. Okay, well, best can, would be to call. Well, are you able to add? This Otherwise, to the I can. Take, yep, I can yeah, take your information and, then, and email it to her. Yeah, and then and then you know at four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, I'll be able to call back and officially do it because I asked for Tuesday's event to be a separate police report because it's cut and dry, and today's should be able to be a police report by itself because it's cut and dry. I want to okay. I, I so need the best. Oh, yep, I'll do it separate. So the best. So if she is working, it won't be until after six a.m. Okay. All right. That's cool. I mean, you know, even if I got to call a little later, that's, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So but what's yeah, the address that Walker. she's not um, letting them leave from? They are currently in Chicago. So it what they were supposed to do is either call or video chat at 4. Okay. And so I called them uh, a little bit right before 4 o'clock, and it went to voicemail. I left the voicemail message. I'm looking forward to my time with my children today. There was no call back from four to six, and you live at five hundred two Glendale. Correct, yes, ma'am. Okay, so all right, so bear with me. So um, at four p.m. today, you were supposed to video chat. Video chat or phone call. Okay, and that was a scheduled. Correct. So 
what happened then at 4 p.m.? Oh, no call back. I, I called about maybe like five or six minutes to four o'clock just to, you know, make sure the phone rang and see if they was going to answer. They didn't answer with the voicemail. I left the voicemail message, and for four to six, I waited um, for the return call because, you know, when I call, it goes to voicemail, and there's no, there is no, um, uh, there's no uh, text to this number and call that. Nu- I, you know, there's no bunch of whole ways. She has made it so that that it is very difficult for me to reach my children. That's that's how she's done it, which is supposed to be against the law. I should be able to call my children and they answer the phone. Um, I talked to one of my sisters earlier today, and they told me that, that my son was video chatting with them yesterday and earlier today and stuff like that. So my son has the technology on his phone for video chat, but just during my time, they make sure that she makes sure that they never get it with me. You you understand what I'm saying? So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. how whatever needs to be written up, the point is is that it needs to be written up, not like, uh, well, it's, it doesn't need to be iffy. It needs to be clear, cut, and dry. From four to six, my children supposed to call me, video chat with me, something, and she broke that rule. She broke that Okay, that what's her last name? Uh, Valerie Thompson. Thompson is her last name. It's like I should, you know, the police officers that when I call at 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, they shouldn't be arguing with me about. So 4, four to 6 p.m. was your scheduled time. Correct. Yes, ma'am. So it first happened, it happened on this past Tuesday, same thing. And then my son called me at 8 o'clock or whatever he told me on Tuesday night. He said, uh, Dad, we will call you on Thursday. And he hung up on the phone on me, you know, uh, rudely, you know, not the way a loving father and son interacts, you and know. And you said that was um, Officer Westfall you're working with? Correct. Yes, ma'am. So I, I, what I can do is I can email more, you know, I got evidence on my computer and stuff like that, so I can't email more stuff in the morning, you know what I'm saying, if that'll uh, help all this stuff out because I, I, I probably need to, you know, get the CADs to be emailed to me uh, probably at some point, like maybe like Monday or, you know, I might have to make a official request today or tomorrow for all these CADs for this past season. Um, minus the ones that you guys already gave me, and you know, try to get copies of the, the you know these police reports mm-hmm. because uh, we got court next week, and um, I need to. All right, yep, you'd me, have so. to actually request those through our office here at dispatch. Um, in in Sparta our, or in Toma? Well, you can call this same number yeah. that you just called. Um, so, yep. So our director is the one who actually. Um, fulfills the open record request. So, right. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Should I should I go down to the police department and fill out that records request thing, or is it something I can just, you know, like you, you said, should be able to do it over the phone. Oh, we and then, just... and it'll be sufficient. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Because I, I think they emailed the cats to me, and I was very very happy about that. Right, but you said that, yeah. So we'll just have to make sure we have, you know, we can locate all the ones that you're going to be looking for. Right. So right. okay. So I have your information down that you had a scheduled time between 4 and 6. Yes, ma'am. Forgot a call back, and I'm going to email this to Officer Westfall. Hey, thank you so much, ma'am. I really appreciate okay, it. Okay, let me get your phone number again. Oh, yeah. It's uh, we 608, yeah, 608-343-9178. Okay, I've got it. I will email it to her. And I, like I said, I don't know if she's in tomorrow, if she's on the same rotation as you know, where today was her last day, then she would be back on Monday. But you can just call tomorrow after 6 and find out, 6 a.m. Okay. Sounds okay. good. All right. Thanks a lot now, man. Appreciate All right. You're welcome. Bye. All right now. Bye. This is Matthew Walker. Can you hear me? Hello? Dispatch. There we go. Can you hear me or no? Barely. Oh, okay. All right. Let me see. All right. What about now? Is this a little bit better? Yeah. Oh, okay, beautiful. Uh, my name is Matthew Walker, and I'm calling because um, 
12 Hours Ago, um, uh, Valerie uh, Thompson, my soon-to-be ex-wife, she violated the court order visitation. Uh, she violated it on the uh, on whatever date Tuesday was, which was from 4 to 6 p.m., and she violated it again yesterday, Thursday, from 4 to 6. The statute uh, that I can't quote at the moment, it basically articulates that you cannot hinder court-ordered parental time with, um, with you know, so between the two. You were supposed to get your kids on Tuesday and Thursday from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., and she wouldn't give the kids to you? Um, uh, that is that is about 90% correct. Um, the, the, the only little part that needs to be edited from what you said is they are out of town. They are in Chicago, but there's nothing at all that blocks them from a video call or a phone call from 4 to 6 on Tuesday and from 4 to 6 on, on Thursday. It's in the court order. If physical time with the children is not available, phone call, Zoom or whatever, that's all in the court order. And if you look up my history, it's all you got you already have, have you don't maybe not in your pocket, but I don't have to provide a copy because you guys already have a copy because it's been provided multiple times and stuff like that. So four to six on Tuesday, four to six on Thursday, um, I made the contact the, to the children. They did not call me back, um, except for uh at eight PM or 8.30 p.m. on Tuesday, my son called me and said, Dad, you know, sorry we missed our time with you. We'll call you on Thursday and hung up. Uh, and then on Thursday, today, yesterday, I called a little bit before 3 o'clock just to kind of, you know, hopefully I get the ball rolling right at 4 o'clock to 6 so we got the time. You know, my daughter is 6. She needs her time with her father, and I need my time with my children too. Um, and there there was no return call there was no answer and so so I left voicemails on both days so the 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 thing that I, I i guess the last part that i need to make sure is said and make sure it's done this this part is very important to me okay the oh go go ahead what's the phone number for you i'm going to let you speak with oh. the officer okay all right 608 343 9178 Okay, give me just a second. Okay. Okay, give me just one second. You're going to be speaking with Officer Harvey. Okay, thank you so much. Appreciate it, ma'am. You're welcome. Okay, give me just one second. We're having mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem. Hello, Officer Harvey. Hey, hey, how you doing, ma'am? Good to talk to you. How are you? Good. How are you? Um, I mean, you know, I'm ha I'm having a good day, you know, uh, in spite of the circumstances. So I appreciate that. Um, uh, officer uh, Westfall, are you do you are you familiar with that officer, ma'am? I am. She actually comes in in about thirty minutes. Oh, she does. Okay, then here's then then I don't want to waste your time because she's aware of it. But I the 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 specific things that I'm I'm grateful to be talking to you for a few moments. If 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 you can communicate this part um, to her, uh, it would be very meaningful to me, Officer Harvey, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, on whatever the date that Tuesday was, and whatever the date that yesterday was, according to the court order. Uh, my children, Naomi and Nathan, I'm supposed to have them in my presence from 4 to 6 on Tuesday and from 4 to 6 on Thursday. If they're out of town or if I'm out of town, obviously that can't happen without, you know, much ridiculousness. That's why we have yeah. cell phones and, you know, video. Now, I'm not going to go into this part too heavily, but I just want to say that Messenger Kids, whatever Messenger Kids is, 
it's made it so that my son has been able to communicate. I've looked in his phone, and he's got like 12 or 13 different people that he's connected with. And at just like a regular phone call, you can pick up your phone, you hit a button, and you're talking to that person. For some reason, we, this has been going on since January of 2020. For some reason, I'm not on Messenger Kids with my son. I've got all the apps, all the stuff, so it is, it is a specific designed to screw me over out of the time with my children. I'm not going to go into that heavily, but it's not that difficult to add me to Messenger Kids so that my son at any time can hit the button and talk to his father. And my daughter can anytime hit the button. To, that is, it's by design. This is not a mass overreacting or nothing like that. This is, it's facts. And I and, and I'm trying to make I'm, I'm I'm trying to make sure that when a because this is the part I really want to go into when 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 police officers submit police reports, certain people are able to lie, and then people get in trouble based on those lies. And then if a person on a report tells the truth, people get in trouble based on whatever it, how it's written. In my past, in my past, Officer Westfall, she, she executed a warrant for my arrest, I believe it was in 2018, for, uh, uh, for two library books, meaning that for two, I don't, I don't even think I had to pay a fine to the library for those two library books. They weren't gone that long or whatever it was. Uh, I, I got the body cam footage of, of Officer Westfall coming to the house to, you know, e e execute the warrant and stuff like that. The Toma police over two library books was able to give the information to the Toma police department. It was written up, and and whoever says warrant for the arrest and $150 fine, it worked out. I need that same level of service. I need whatever it is, however small or big, that on this past Tuesday, this past Thursday, when I called, I did exactly what you're supposed to do. There's no flaw in my way of trying to communicate to my children. Hey, y'all, it's almost four o'clock. Can we talk? There was a. They, they did not respond back to me. I left messages, messages on both days. The, uh, my son, at, like I said, at 8:30, he call, he called me and said, on on you know on Tuesday, he said, Dad, and I got the message, I got the audio of it, so that I could add it to the evidence. That's I probably get an email so I could add it to the evidence, or I drop it off later on today. He said, Daddy, uh, sorry we didn't talk to you, and we will talk to you on Thursday. Hang up. Which is, you know, communicating with your father. There is a respectful way to do it, and again, it's frustrating. And all I'm asking for is the other times that I've called, those are on CAD. But Tuesday and Thursday, it's very clear cut. The statute says what it says. The information, this is not like, it wasn't like May, June, whatever. This is specifically four to six. She did not make any effort at all to make sure that my children talk to me. I found out that my son on Tuesday, the reason why he was not, he's not caught because he's outside playing basketball with, with, uh, you know, with his friend. And I still, I don't know what happened on Thursday, but my point is, is that it's very clear. Matt didn't bring back two library books. So warrant for his arrest, whatever that process was. Valerie did not give me the, ch I did not have the children to four to six. However, it needs to be written up so that it can, those two dates can be a police report separate from everything else, and then I can move it forward. If, if the police department is not going to go to the prosecutor's office to press charges for whatever conflict, whatever, at least I'll have it, and I will do what I have to do because I need this to stop because all it's doing, all it's doing is frustrating me, it's frustrating y'all. Because if nobody is going, if, if the, 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 the uh, Lotomba Library says, we can't have missing books. So they put measures in to make sure that there's no more missing books. And then guess what? I have not brought back a book late, no more. I don't even show up into the, to the Tomba Library no more. I don't even want to 
suspect, you know, or nothing like that. So they'll never have that problem for me again. I need that to happen for me. The Tomah Police Department, I believe, is capable and, and, and all of that. I'm asking, please, can we put these two dates onto an actual police report that is fully formed with the statute or whatever, I can give the facts, I can email the facts because, you know, I, I can add the rest of the evidence to it so that whatever the evidence is full and it's there. And then from there, from there, you know, if I have to do something or if the, the, whoever's got to do stuff, because we got court next week, because I need this to be worked out. I'm not going to spend my, – my daughter is six. I'm not spending the next 12 years of her life where she can't talk to me. My son, I have video footage, ma'am, and I'm sorry, Officer Harvey. I have, I have video footage, and I'll show this to you if you want, of earlier, a, a little point last year where my son, he, he was 10 years old, he was nine at the time. One of the officers gave a little certificate to my son and said, hey, um, uh, you are um, – uh, I caught you doing something good. Here's a scoop of ice cream from Culver's certificate. And my son looked at it, and because my ex-wife, she, she taught him how to be, uh, 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 we don't drink cow milk, whatever, that was the reason for him to say what he said. But, you know, it doesn't look like that at the time. He took the piece of paper in front of the office. I got the video for it. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. My son, who I don't have any control over, who I'm calling you right now so I can get be able to talk to my children, he takes the certificate from the officer and he throws it on the ground and says, I don't need cow milk ice cream. Now, the officer and me were in a, we were in a, in a tough position because in theory, that may be, that may, can be viewed as disrespect. It can be viewed as disrespect. And let's say my son were, were 20 years old. And, and if you're not aware, I mean, I, you know, you're a Toma police officer, and, and the, the percentile of black people in Toma is, I believe, it's at 0.5% um, uh, in Toma, I believe, the last time I looked at the, uh, the census stuff or whatever. So black people, I fear the police. I've been beaten up by the police. In 2018, after the warrants for my arrest, for, the, for whatever, I was in the Toma VA. I got video footage. They tased me with three tases at the time. I'm definitely afraid of all police officers. I'm afraid. I don't need my son to die early over a miscommunication. I love my children. I've been a, I've been a government, I, you know, I'm in military for 25 years, and I'm a paralegal. I'm not, I wasn't no infantry. I was a paralegal. I've worked with the police officers. Police officers that I work with up at Fort McCoy, they've been at the Toma Police Department. So I thought that I had a good track record in my life up to this point that makes it so that I can be considered a valid citizen that I can be listened to. But after I got beat up by the police officers, five on the 4th of July of 2018, and seven of them on the 8th, it traumatized me. Because there was no reason that I had to be treated like that. I, I do not act out. It's all it, it lies. And it's like nobody worked to, nobody said, man, hey, you guys are overboard. Hey, doesn't this look bad? There's no black people here. How, you know, what, everybody, nobody is concerned about the optics or concerned about the after effects of what you do when you kill or beat up a black person or whatever. My son, I do. Oh, Matthew. I'm sorry. What, Forgive me. You're, you're Forgive going me. on a tangent. What do you want done today? I just want a police report that is accurately solid. The same way that the Toma Police Department was able to say two library books that I, resulted I, I, in. You repeated yourself about the library books. I'm sorry. Right, right, right. I'm, right, right. I'm, I'm sorry. Understand. I just, I just want, a, I want a police report that does not. I want a police report that states the facts and does not try to. Okay. Yes, yeah, sorry, I apologize. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I obviously understand you're frustrated, but for me to do anything, you said Officer Westfall knows the situation? She has been making a running CAD thing because the reason why it's a running CAD thing is because whenever I talk to an officer in the morning, 12 hours after the thing, what they do is they spend time 
letting me know that they're not going to turn it into a police report and giving me back and forth feedback about the stuff and, oh, well, this wrong and this wrong, whatever. So I'm trying to separate what happened this week separate from those. Not saying I'm going to get the CADS for all of those because CADS is not a police report. That's just a record of a phone call. The police report for Tuesday and Thursday yesterday that states the facts. This is the statute that she violated. I got the statute in my email from one of the officers I talked to earlier, so I can email that to you or bring it up to the police department, you know, later on, maybe 7 or 8 o'clock this morning. The statute, the facts of the situation, I can provide a separate written or audio statement or whatever. I can provide the additional evidence, whatever I need to do to make it so that the police report has what it needs in it so that beyond today, it's not just a record of what happened. I want to be able to, if it goes to the prosecutor's office, if they decide not to take, take it up, that's cool. But I need it to go, whatever a police report does that turns into something, that's what I need for what happened Tuesday and Thursday, just those two days. If it's two separate police reports or one police report that encompasses both days, probably if I had a preference, one police report for each day. Like if I punch somebody on Tuesday and I bust a window on Thursday, that's two separate charges, two separate police reports, two separate accountings. So it, it, whatever is going to make it so that it, a prosecutor can look at it, yeah, they're going to decide whether they're going to move it forward or not. But my point is they, I need them to have it in their hand as an option. And so far the CAD listing, I appreciate it, the record of it. But the CAD doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't go to a prosecutor. It doesn't go – I can't take it to the judge. I can't take it anywhere except for just as showing a record of it. A police report means that work has been done, and we've determined that potentially this crime has been committed. And that's the only reason why I use the example of the library, because if library books rise to the level that I – you know, if it, is, if it does, if it does, then – the, 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 the breaking the court order, breaking the, the Wisconsin statute should also should be even just maybe even an inch higher than that at all, because it because it has it has longer term effects on my son. I don't want my son to grow up disrespecting cops and I don't want for um, my daughter to grow up and be promiscuous or anything like that because a father's involvement is important. And if this police report is one thing that is actually going to move things in the direction of this being right, I don't hate Valerie. I'm not spiteful against her. I've been a Christian since age 19. I know how to forgive. I don't have any ill will. I have a responsibility to my babies, and I love them. And I'm just asking, the only thing I'm asking for is a police report that's written, you know, in a, what is it, a non-biased way, uh, it's not that big of a deal, the statute, you, whatever a police report is supposed to look like that makes it to the level of the prosecutor's office or makes it to the level where I can take it with me and I can demonstrate, you know, like if somebody busted my window, I could take the police report and give it to the insurance company and say, yeah, somebody busted my window. Oh, you know, whatever, whatever, because, you know, I only know about police reports. Yeah. yeah. The unfortunate thing about child custody is usually we don't get involved. But that's all court. But that's here's the – no, and I got you. No, I understand it. No, I understand about that part that you guys don't get involved. That's why I'm just asking for the police report. If the involvement – here's the thing. Valerie called one of the police officers and said when – and this is this is how it was put. When I – Valerie, don't let the when I when I violate that statute that I keep calling and getting cads and stuff like that about. When I call about it, like you said, people they don't get involved. So therefore, I'm left with the frustration. Like, like you said, you don't get involved. So so this has been going on since January 2020. So now here I am. What is my recourse now? Do I punch her in the face? Oh, that's assault. Do I kill her? No, that's murder or attempted murder. What do I do? I sit outside and I honk my horn so that my children can hear me inside. Oh, daddy's outside. Valerie called the police and, and, and the police officer called me and said, 
Matthew, if you honk the horn loudly, I will give you a ticket. Now, here's the thing. If the police don't get involved. Because that's, that's disorderly conduct. Well, there's still a statute. If, if, if disorderly conduct is a statute, then the, 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 then, then the, what, whatever it is, whatever the statute that says you're not supposed to uh, uh, not have your children. Why do, why, okay, then if, if, if I've got, I guess I've got it wrong then. If, the, if a police, I was under the impression I'd be able to get a police report, and listen, I don't mean to be argumentative at all, because obviously Valerie has a recourse. She can hold the children, and no one's going to hold her accountable. Judge, prosecutors, police, no one's going to put it on paper to make it go forward. They're going to basically let me know there's nothing they can do. So now what I have to do is I've got to just sit with this and just deal with it. So now I'll do that. So if that's the case, no problem. Like, just, just, it, 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 I'll do, I will just live with it and not expect anything to get done. And the only thing that makes me sad about it is, is that to me it really confirms that me, Matthew Walker, my experience is that I can't, there's no one that I will, that no one can, no one is willing to work to make sure that, you know, when I complain. The Toma Police, the, 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 the library, Valerie, everybody can make a complaint about me, and it gets done. It gets done. Valerie, who's the only reason why I'm honking the horn is because I, she didn't let the children out, and the officer doesn't say to her, well, why don't you put the children out? Why don't you grieve with the children? He won't honk the horn. But she don't even say that. That's, it's no. like, wow. <laughs> okay, and listen. I'm, okay, go ahead. I'm listening, ma'am. I'm listening. Okay, so for in order for us to do any of this, we would need a child custody agreement in hand. Okay, I'll have. do that. I'll, I'll, it, it's and on CCAP. They, I, go ahead. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt I, you. Please finish talking without you interrupting me. No, no, no. I'm, I, I apologize. Please okay. forgive me. I'm sorry, Officer Harvey. Okay. I apologize. And, and I appreciate your... Thing, pr- okay, Matthew. The only thing that we would be able to do is refer charges. Where we won't, that doesn't mean that we are charging them out. That just means that we would write it up basically like I was full, Officer Westfall is doing having that CAD going. Mm-hmm. And you said that um, your son did contact you and said he was playing basketball? He called me at 830 and said, yeah. yeah, go ahead. He said he was playing basketball with his friends. That's why he couldn't talk to you? That's why he missed my call and that uh, he would call me on Thursday. Okay. Yes. So that so that doesn't fit the statute because that's not Valerie saying that they can't speak to you. That's your son being like, oh, I'm playing basketball. I'm not talking to you right now. That's not Valerie saying that he can't talk to you and holding him away from you. That's your son making that decision that he's going to be playing basketball instead of talking to you. And if if I were in a position, so your, but no, but if I'm in a position to prove the otherwise, does that like in other words, if I could show you uh, evidence you that, me that no, I know, I, I know, what I, what I'm saying is I know what I told you, you know, I know what I told you, and what I'm saying is is that because I have resources in or in terms of and how, because I care about my children, I can prove to you. By things that I will submit, I can show you that 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 it is the otherwise that it fits the statute. Now, yeah, verbally, cool. And if we're gonna dismiss it like a no big deal, then that's cool too. But I can prove otherwise, you know. Additionally, is what I'm saying. I can prove to you that Matthew, you might think you know the statute, but that's not accurate. Okay. Yes, ma'am. See, your son, your son decided to not speak to you. That's not Valerie holding your son away from you. Because if Valerie was holding your son back, saying you can't speak to your father, that's completely different, right? That is something then that would be enforced. But your son decided that he's going to play basketball instead of speak to you. 
that's just something that you need to speak with your son about or maybe speak to the judge about when you guys go to court this week. And and that so but you guys my, go to court but this but, coming week? but it's next week. And the thing about it is the challenge is is that each time that it is specifically Valerie is holding them, I'm not letting you see the children verbally or through text or whatever. I'll still call and there's another loophole that, 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 that's there. In other words, it never rises to the level of we're going to make sure that it doesn't happen anymore. So I got you. I understand what you're saying. In other words, basically, I don't, there's not enough there for making it a real police support because Nathan, he chose, that was his choice. I got you. Okay. I, I can accept that, but meaning I, that. Matthew, unfortunately, this is the first time I've ever spoken to you, so I don't know what's happened in the past. I understood mean, no i know and 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 i and i did not i did not want to be uh uh, uh for, to unload on you so i i do want you to know i apologize to you i promise you i promise you that if i were uh in a better position from the standpoint of wealth like if i had property and stuff like that and you know um i was in a position to you know do donations to you know police funds and whatever i i promise you that my demeanor would be different in terms of if I had a problem with it because I, I feel that I could have been able to just say it, whatever. But I'm just to make donations to the police does not. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it in that. No, I didn't mean it in like a negative. What I'm saying is that sometimes people who have means, you know, I'm functioning pro se without a lawyer. I'm, I'm, I'm just a, I'm a guy who is, you know, retired military, and I'm, I'm just you know, trying to do the right thing with my life, that it seems does not count as much as, let's say, somebody who does have a lot of money and they make a complaint. That's my point. In other words, I, that's, that's what I'm, I'm that's, feeling. That's not accurate. That's not, I get what you're feeling, but that's not accurate. Because okay. I, stuff, might have, might, stuff, might have, stuff might have happened in the past between you and Valerie, but... Unfortunately, I was not there for those situations, so I don't know what happened. No, and I'm not trying to blame you. Okay, so I, I, I'll accept what you're saying. In, in this situation, just because your son didn't want to speak with you does not mean that Valerie was holding your children from you. So there's nothing <clears> that I, right now in this day, can do about it. Now, if Valerie is not letting the children speak to you or see you is when you need to call us back. But right now, there's no legal activity happening between your child custody. Okay. All right. Um, well, look, thank you for your time and thank you for hearing me out and uh, thank you for the, uh, the judgment call uh, of, of yep. that. So I'll talk to you later, ma'am. Thank you very much. All right. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Um, let me summarize what happened in this video. My children were out of town with Valerie. Valerie knows that my time with my children is from 4 to 6 on Tuesdays and from 4 to 6 on Thursdays. And she also knew that the Toma Police Department was not going to hold her accountable for violating the court order. She also knew that Judge Goodman was not going to hold her accountable for violating the court order. And she also knows that the guardian ad litem is not going to hold her accountable. Nobody holds Valerie accountable for violating Wisconsin Statute 948.3. They always, this particular officer, I don't know if before she talked to me, she was instructed, find a way to make it go away. But police officers are trained to listen and hear for a crime or listen and hear to to block a police report from being made. And that's what this officer did. That's the summary. The summary is that the Toma Police Department, when it comes to Matthew Walker, when it comes to me, they don't like doing police reports properly they don't like doing their job when it comes to me 
I'm waiting for the police department, the Toba Police Department, to one day treat me like I matter. But apparently to the Toma Police Department, when I call them, no matter how much time I waste, all of that stuff, this happened over the span of like two days. You know? Why am I waking up early in the morning calling the police to inform them of a crime or a violation of a Wisconsin statute, at least a ticket? And if they're not going to do anything about it, why does the Toba Police Department even exist? Why do they even exist? I know why they exist when, as it relates to me. They exist to make my life difficult. They exist as a, as a barrier to true justice when it comes to my situation. My children should not be held hostage by my ex-wife. And that's not the Toma Police Department's problem. To fix my my custody issues. It's not. Here is what they're supposed to do. When I call and report that she's blocked me. Their job is not to try. And find a way to not file a police report. Their job is to take my statement. And move it forward. Their job is not to give me any opinions. Their job is not to try to. If they're going to try to bully somebody and bully me, as in other calls, they didn't bully me at all in any of these calls. But if they're going to find a way, if they're going to bully me, they need to also bully Valerie. And they need to put the, just like I have the fear of God in me, that if I make a move, if I grab for a cell phone, a police officer might say, oh my God, he's got a gun. And I die. Just like I have to not make any sudden moves. Police officers should be able to know how to, if they're not going to do anything, say, you know what? We're a corrupt police department and we don't get involved in custody battles. We don't say that. Just say that you're corrupt. Say that you're not trying to help Matthew Walker. Say that. Don't try to give me, don't waste my time. You got all of them. Everybody was on the clock. I wasn't on the clock when I called. I'm on my own time. When I called the police department to report that Valerie blocked me from the with from, from my time with the children, the police department needs to take it seriously. If they're not going to take it seriously, then why do they exist? Why do they get funds to do a job that they're not going to do for me, a citizen who is a taxpayer and is a voter and a resident of Toma. A lot of police officers do not like the term defund the police. They don't like that. But guess what? What are you getting paid to do? Are you getting paid to block me? And block my rights for my children? Is that what you're paid to do? Or are you paid to take seriously when somebody reports a crime or a violation of a, of a Wisconsin statute or a violation of a court order? It's either call the police and the police do something about it or or what? Either I, I'm not supposed to call about it. I'm just supposed to sit and, sit and have it in my chest and, 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 and just be mad and sad. Is that what I'm supposed to do? If I went over to her house, busted down the door and took my children, you guys, you, you, when she would call, you wouldn't block her. Matthew busted down the door because it was his time with his children. He, the court order says he's supposed to be. Here at four o'clock to be with the children, and he came. He busted down the door, and he took the children. They put him in the car, and he spent two hours with them. He brought them back. Here's what you guys would do. Here's what the Toba Police Department would do. Okay, busted down your door. All right, we're gonna we're gonna get him for damage of property, criminal criminal damage of property, and because you're his ex-wife. Okay, domestic violence. 
you guys would have you guys would have filled up that charge sheet against me just like you did with the library books my two children matter less than two library books Whoever intentionally causes a child to leave, takes a child away, or withholds a child for more than 12 hours beyond the court report proof period of physical placement or visitation period from a legal custodian with the intent to deprive, deprive me of my rights, the person is guilty of a class, C, class F felony. But there's never been a police report written to straighten Valerie out in this in this situation. Each time she does it, each time she does it, she gets emboldened each time because nothing ever happens. Thank you, Toma Police Department, for showing me that my children don't matter and that I don't matter. 